In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use PowerShell ISE debug tool. The debug tool can be really helpful when you're running a script and things maybe aren't working the way you expect them to, or if you're interested in learning how the script is working, how it executes, it allows you to step through the script execution and query variables and see how um, decisions are made, how the script runs. So it can be a, a useful learning tool as well as a useful um, troubleshooting tool. So one of the first things to know about using PowerShell ISE debug is that you need to have saved your script in order to be able to debug it. Usually when you write a script, you open your scripting environment, you enter in your code, you hit the run script, and it executes your code. Um, but if I want to be able to debug that code, then I'm going to have to use or save that file, the script, to the file system somewhere where I can access it. So to save my file, I'm going to go to the file menu and select Save As. And this way I can store the script where I know how to get to it. So with Save As, it gives me the dialog to pick and choose the folder that I want to save my file to. So I'm going to save it into my current directory. So you should notice here my prompt that my current directory is on the C drive under the users folder in my Denise profile folder. So I'm going to save my script to a folder called scripts underneath my user profile. And I'm going to save this file as abc.ps1. So now that the script has been saved, then I can, um, I can now use the debug tool. So if we take a quick look at what this script is going to do, it's going to create two variables, uh, a dollar files and a dollar dirs. And it's going to use those variables to look at the current directory and look for folders and files and store the name of the folder or the file to a variable. So this statement, my get child item, is going to get the file system objects from the current directory. So there's the dot notation. And then the for each structure is going to go through each file system object and check to see if the PS is container property is equal to true. And if it is a folder, then the PS is container property will be true. If it's not true, then the file system object would be a file. So if it's true, it's going to store the name of the file system object into the DIRS array. If it's not a folder, it's going to store the name of the file system object in the files array. And then once the for each loop is finished, it's going to display some static text, uh, files in the current folder, and then it will display the contents of the files array followed by a blank line, some more static text, and then the contents of the DIRS variable. So now that I have saved my file and I want to start debugging the script, my first step is to place my cursor in on a line or on a statement on my script where I want to insert my debug breakpoint. So placing my cursor on my first variable assignment and then going to the debug menu, I can select the toggle breakpoint option. And then this creates my first breakpoint in my script. I can add more than one breakpoint if I need to. For this example, we'll just use the one. So now I have a visible indicator that, my, that there is a breakpoint. So when I run this script now, when my script hits this statement, it's going to enter into debug mode, and then I'll be able to um, interact with the script 
as it runs. So if we go ahead and hit the start run script, the script is going to hit my breakpoint and then down here I'm going to have in my command shell environment um, I'll have my visual indicator that we're in debug mode. So while I have this debug mode running I can interact with the command shell and that allows me to display the contents of, any, of variables. It allows me to run or execute any PowerShell commandlets. So I could do a get child item dot and then that will display the contents of my current folder. So I can execute PowerShell commandlets. Um, I can also look at the variables as they're being created. So this very first breakpoint is going to create a variable called files. It's going to be an empty variable that will be set equal to null. So if I want to step into my script, if we take a look at the debug menu here, the function key or the key to step into the next statement in the script is F11. It's usually easier to debug this code using the keyboard. So I just have to hit one key to go into the next step. So I'm going to use the F11 uh, function key on my keyboard to enter in to the or run or execute the current statement. So as soon as I hit F11, <clears throat> my statement executes. And now I can take a look at the content, the dollar files variable. So it should be null. The files variable is created, but it doesn't contain anything. So to go to the next statement, I hit F11, and then that will create my $DERS variable. And then the next statement, the highlighted statement, the next statement to run will be the one that generates the file system objects. So F11. And then dollar content variables should contain my directory, my current directory files. So if we display dollar content, the output should look the same as the previous get content commandlet. So they have the same values. So now dollar content was created, it contains the file system objects from the current directory. So the next step is going to enter into the for each loop. And so it's going to go through each object in the collection and query the PS's container property to determine if it's a file or a folder. So if we hit F11 here, um, we move into our instance variable. So dollar underscore is going to be the instance variable and it will contain the current object instance as it goes through the loop. So if we hit F11 here, dollar underscore will get created. So if at any time during the loop I want to see what value is in dollar underscore, I can just type dollar underscore and then I can display what's currently in that instance variable. So right now, it contains the first value in my directory listing. And you can see from the output that this is a directory. It has a, a D attribute. So in this if statement, if we hit F11, the if statement should evaluate to true. And then it should store the name property of the current instance to the dollar DERS array. So F11. And now if we take a look at the contents of dollar DERS, there's the name of that first file system object. When we hit F11 again, we get a new value in dollar underscore. So if we take a look at what's in dollar underscore, there's the next object in dollar underscore. So now when we go to the if statement, 
it will look and compare to see if that current instance is a directory. So F11, it's a directory. It's going to store the name property in the DIRS variable and then go and get the next instance in the collection. So I'm just going to keep going through this for each structure. Another directory, another directory. Eventually we should find a file. There we go. So now the if the else statement is executed. So that means that we have a file instead of a directory. So if we do F11, that should store the current instance name to the files variable. So there's the name of the file stored in the files variable. So we hit F11 again. And we've got some more files. I'm just going to keep going until we finish the collection. Okay. So there's the static text that was just displayed. Files in the current folder. And then the next statement will display the contents of the dollar files variable. So those are all the files that were in that folder. And then if we hit F11 again, we get our blank line, the static text, and then the contents of the DIRS variable. So as you can see, you can using the debug tool, you can interact with the script as it's executing. You can query variables and you can watch um, decisions as they're being made as your script executes. So now if I wanted to run my script without debugging, I would just go to my debug menu, select remove all breakpoints, and then I can run the script without entering into the debug mode. 